Our next group on the production of uh, cumene, uh, 100,000 metric tons, is group number four, consisting of, of Izu Array, Frank Benachor, Kamal Rafiq Sakina, Hoffler, and Toiger Unal. Ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. My name is Kamal Rafiq, and these are my colleagues, Sakina Hoffler, Toiger Unal, and Frank Benachor, and Izu Array. And today we're going to talk to you about our facility with the cumin production, which we came up to produce 100 metric tons of cumin. This is basically the agenda we're going to follow, so you guys can follow through like who's going to talk on what slides. Basically, the, the objective of this project was to design an economically feasible plant of cumin to make sure that we have we break even at some point that, and we are making sure that whatever we put in, we may actually make more of. And also, we had to understand the significance of simulation software in this project. We had to give a lot of credit to ChemCast simulation and, ca and CapCost because they really helped us out a lot when estimating our cost and to just see the process flow. And now I'm going to hand it over to Toygar, and he's going to talk to you a little bit. Hello, everyone. Uh, basically, what you see on the screen right now is just a cycle diagram of what we did from the earlier projects that we had, project one and two. Uh, we produced a block flow diagram in order to serve as a visual aid, and afterwards we went straight into the ChemCAD simulation. From the ChemCAD simulation, we were able to extract some some data for our units, such as the energy and uh, material balances that we did. We also conducted those by hands, but we used the ChemCAD as a cross-reference. Uh, from the values that we extracted from ChemCAD, we were able to use that for our equipment sizing, and eventually we went into our plot plan, which since we the sizing gave us our dimensions, we were able to scale that to show the, the buyer investors a scaled representation of what the plan would look like. From there, uh, we went into the cost analysis. Okay. We'll take over from here. Okay. So basically, in this presentation, we want to start off with a block flow diagram, which is a basic overall schematic representation of our process. Next, we have a process flow diagram, which is a more in-depth um, description of our process, which basically shows the equipment, um, pumps, reactors, installation columns, etc. We also have, we also have a plot plan, which is which will basically show a bird's eye view of the AutoCAD system and the PNID, which is a schematic representation of the um, of our, one of our reactors. The software that we use in this project is ChemCAD, which was used for simulation. CapCost, which was used to perform economic analysis and cost analysis, and AutoCAD, which was used for the bird's eye view of the plot of the plot plan. Um, what we have right here is the basic block flow diagram. We have propylene and benzene mixing and going into a shell and tube reactor. From the shell and tube reactor, we have it going to a flash drum, which separates the impurities from the product that we're trying to produce. Um, from the flash drum, it goes to the distillation column. The distillation column separates the product and the benzene, which recycles back into the loop. And um, from distillation column one, it goes into dis distillation column two, and from that we have a production of cumene and a side reaction, which reduces DIPB. Next we have Izu. Hello, everybody. Um, well, like she said on the block flow diagram, this is a PFD, which is pretty much a process flow diagram of the whole process. Um, with this. It tells you, you know, what comes in, what goes out, what goes where, pressure, um, temperature, and all that stuff. Now, we could start with um, the benzene, the propylene coming in at, um, benzene coming in at 153 kilomoles per hour, and propylene coming in at 127.5 kilomoles per hour. Going through um, the vessel V801 there, which is kind of a recycle, um, recycled drum that the recycled benzene comes in and the feed benzene comes in before going over to V802 where the benzene and propylene um, gets together. Now um, that goes to a um, feed vaporizer which pretty much takes it up to 100 degrees um, Celsius before it goes into the fired heater which pretty much takes it up to um, the reactor um, process conditions which is 350 degrees. Now, you have the pump before it, V802, which would take it up to what the reactor requires. Now, um, after the reactor, the reactor fluent, it goes into a flash drum, which is V803, which at the top goes your C3s, which we use as fuel for a fired heater. The bottom goes into T802, which is our first distillation column. 
where the top goes as recycled benzene and the bottom goes to T802. Now 802, you have the top being your cumin and the bottom being your um, DIPB. We now have uh, uh, our next to the last group, group number five, consisting of Leo Alala, Jignesh Amlishvar, Cesar Yamillo, uh, John Laverde, and Salini Verma. Uh, as part of Infinity Chemical Corporation, and they promised a few surprises during this presentation, uh, which we'll be looking forward to see. Good evening, fellow classmates, Professor Andela, and distinguished chemical engineering professors. My name is Jignesh K. Elmisher. I am the chairman of the board of Infinity Chemical Corporation. My executives and I are here today to present design calculations and evaluations for Project 3. 20, the 25th of April, 2007. Before we continue on to the project and its various aspects, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my executive uh, management team. I have my president, John Laverde, and I have my three executive vice presidents, Cesar Jaramillo, Salini Verma, and Leo Lava. Basically, we're going to start this project. We're going to do an alternative way. Um, lots of other presentations have been on the Woods methodology, and we want to deviate that because we've discussed so much of it in the first and second project. So initially, we're, what we're going to start off today is the initial pr process flow diagram, the PFD for the actual plant. Any modifications that we've made since the second project, and Leo Lava will be go ahead and do that. Okay, the process flow diagram were utilized to understand the optimal design, location, and assignment of equipment in, in this capacity, such as pumps and heat exchangers. Uh, the raw materials were benzene and propylene, as you can see. And um, benzene and propylene are in the storage tank feeding to the pumps of uh, P101 and P102, and is heat up to the fire heater. Uh, the fire heater uses mixtures of uh, air and fuel gas or natural gas. Uh, the fire heater um, heat up the, the materials to its um, uh, reactor operation temperatures. Once it is heat up to the reactor operation temperature, it goes to the reactor. Uh, propylene and benzene in the reactor is an isothermal and exothermal reaction to form cumene. Once you go to react, you go to heat exchangers, and then the flash unit will separate the undesired and desired products. The undesired be the propane, propylene, and we form as a fuel gas. In the bottom stream, we're gonna have the uh, cumene and the DIP, the disopropyl benzene. Then go to the first distillation, which is gonna separate the benzene, cumene, and the isopropyl benzene. In the tap screen, we go to benzene, we go to the recycle stream in one of the storage tank. In the bottom stream, we're gonna send the cumin and the isopropene benzene to the second installation column. The second installation column separates the product, which consists of the cumin of the tap stream, and the bottom stream would be the isopropyl benzene. That would be a process flow diagram. Next, I'm gonna introduce the um, my partner Salini Burma, she's going to talk about uh, the steps and the safety issues and, and environmental that has to be taken able to have a safe environmental um, plan. And now we have uh, uh, designed the preliminary design like PFD. Now it's time to uh, see. Um, about the control mechanism, how we have applied. Uh, this is the piping and instrumentation diagram for the reactor as it was assigned, at, as well as this is the major contributing equipment uh, used in the process of cumin production. Uh, the main concern for the uh, reactor was to control the temperature and the pressure. Uh, the flow coming into the reactor, which is a vapor mixture, uh, that also needs to be controlled because the volume of the reactor is fixed. Uh, that is why it is essential to have a sufficient amount of flow coming to the reactor so that reaction ca can take place 
in the presence of a catalyst. Another essential um, uh, need control mechanism to be done for the, the temperature, which is another essential um, a key component to, to be controlled. Sorry. Um, temperature, because uh, the reactor occurs at very high temperature, and the reaction itself is an exo exothermic reaction. That is why we have um, a feedback control loop, so we can maintain the temperature by controlling the boiling feed water. Um, also, we have um, a control uh, mechanism for um, process, uh, pressure as well, and we have here is the feedback control mechanism as well. Um, our company give uh, great uh, consideration for safety, uh, on not only to the working and working atmosphere as well as the we make sure that we have um, environmentally friendly process. Um, com company give great. Uh, consideration for safety by installing alarm system throughout the plant or uh, building a fire department within the plant itself uh, for quicker response in case of any emergency. Um, con company also uh, co consider another react uh, another uh, safety consideration as a hazard and operability study uh, not only on the reactor but uh, other major equipment uh, every five years for more safe production plant. Um, HAZAV is basically is the study of possible deviation that could occur in the process. Uh, like, um, for example, what if there is a high temperature in stream eight? Um, the possible reason could be uh, the stream may be overheated uh, by fire heater and as a consequence, uh, reactor could be overheated ad, as well. And to uh, control this deviation, we may con uh, we use the boiling feed water with bypassing uh, cold water to the reactor. Another example could be if there is no propylene in the stream uh, from the feed of feed feed pump, uh, probably the pump is not working effectively, and as a result, there will be no um, reaction happening in the reactor. And to resolve from this problem, we can um, replace the pump, feed pump, with the backup pump. Um, in the past couple of slides, we've just discussed equipment cost and operating costs very in depth. And in order to have a cumin plant, you need to understand the economic feasibility of it. And there's many contributing factors that go into building a plant. Um, some of the assumptions that we've made, um, basically we're starting, we're building this plant in Texas. So because of the fact that there are so many factories, there are so many industries already there, we are estimating the cost of land to be $1 million. Uh, we will get this money back at the 12th year because we have an agreement with the government of Texas, uh, but initially we will have to pay $1 million for it. Talking about the cumin and the amount that we're producing, we're producing 102,334 metric tons a year. This is at 358 days capacity. If you were to have any problems, in order to make 100,000 metric tons as defined, we need to only work 350 days. So there's some leeway into this. If everything goes right, we will be making this much amount of money. Now our target is at 50 cents a pound at 99% weight purity. So approximately we're making 112 $112 million, a little bit over $112 million. Now this fixed capital income, which is a depreciated value, is $15 million. And if you're thinking to yourself, how is it that low? Well, this takes into consideration the grassroots initiative, as well as buildings and off-site facilities. When we define buildings and off-site facilities, we're talking about R&D, we're talking about a cafeteria, we're talking about anything utensil-wise that is necessary for the operators to have a place to come to us enjoy it, work safely, and go back home in one piece. So this is what we're talking about off-site facilities. Um, we haven't decided on if, if it's gonna be a gym or health bar, something that would be productive, and that will save us money on the long term on top of healthcare costs. And what, how we initiated the grassroots project is the fact that we took the total install cost of the equipment and we multiplied 1.5. But that $15 million does not represent the grassroots itself for the equipment. That also represents a $4.7 million that we've spent 
for the buildings and the off-site facilities for this plant. And that's how the $15 million is tabulated for this value. Now, money is always necessary to start up a plant, always. You need some capital, you need some startup cost. We estimate the startup cost of this plant to be $2.2 million. And what I'll explain later on is this is separate from the working capital that we've required for initiation of this plant. In accordance to our 12-year plan, two years of startup, two years to build the plant, and 10 years of production, we've also assumed $2 million of general expenses annually. And these are miscellaneous costs. If $2 million is not occurred, then we'll make a donation of whatever remaining amount is. But our fiscal policy is based on $2 million of any miscellaneous items that might appear or might not appear we haven't counted for and to adjustment that. So the COMD, the cost of manufacturing depreciated, it's approximately $100 million, a little bit over $100 million. And that's calculated using the equation that you see at the bottom. The FCI stands for the fixed capital income. The CO is uh, cost of operating labor, and then utilities, uh, waste treatment, and raw materials. Now, raw waste materials for this operation was very minimal. And we tried to maintain and curb any discharge or anything possible. So we have different containment units to bring it back into the system that is required to have it. One thing to note is that this is a depreciated cost of manufacturing value. If you're looking for the cost of manufacturing non-depreciated, that 0 0.180 of the fixed capital income is incorrect. It would be really 0 0.280 of the fixed capital income if you were to look for the cost of manufacturing non-depreciated. Now, everyone must be interested in the fact that we've discussed operating costs, we've discussed all the logistical analysis of this project. Now, how does the plant look like? So without further ado, Infinity Chemical Corporation would like to present to you our 3D cumene plant. And to facilitate an understanding our cumene plant, as well as describing what our equipment cost was, Leo Lava will go ahead and provide a tour of our cumene plant through the, through the next slide. 